everybody? And everybody can hear me? Is it okay? Uh, so, first of all, I would like to <laughs> I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this interesting event. And I will tell you about symbolic computing in Python with SymPy. So, what is SymPy? It's a library which has a goal to provide uh, facilities for symbolic manipulation of expressions. It's an open source library and it, here I write that it aims to become, but it already is a full-featured computer algebra system and uh, thanks to Python, working with Python, it can keep the code, I think, as simple as possible given the algorithms that it implements. And so, thanks to using Python, it's uh, comprehensible and easily extensible. Uh, so, a little bit about history of SymPy. The development was started in 2005 by my schoolmate. Uh, we were both studying physics uh, and he started developing it in 2005. Uh, and in 2007, uh, SymPy for the first time was uh, selected into Google Summer of Code. And since then, every year, Google is paying several students uh, to uh, develop projects for SymPy, which is, I would say, very successful collaboration. Uh, and in 2011, Aaron Muir took over the lead development role from Andrei Cherty, and since then he is the lead developer of SymPy. Uh, I have to admit that uh, I have uh, like started working on SymPy in 2008, and uh, since then I'm, uh, let's say in recent years, I'm not very active in SymPy development, uh, but I'm trying to be like up to speed with the current status of, of SymPy. Uh, and currently SymPy already has uh, accumulated contributions from more than 750 people and the current code base has more than 500,000 lines. So it has become a really big, big project. Uh, so why would we like to use, why would anyone like to use SymPy? Its advantage is, is that it's a standalone Python library. Uh, it's BSD licensed, so uh, it can be quite easily incorporated into other projects. Uh, it embraces Python, uses the Python philosophy, and it can be used as a user interface or as well as a library, so it can be easily inc included in your projects. But these points explain why to use SymPy if you already want to use some computer algebra system. Uh, but why would you like, why would anyone like to use SymPy as a data scientist? And uh, when I was invited to this event, I was, uh, I had no idea what uh, kind of people will be here, what are their interests. So I cannot answer this for you. But I will give you a few examples of what SymPy can do. And it's up to you to decide if it can be helpful to you in, in any way. Uh, I myself am a physicist, so for me SymPy is useful, for example, for solving differential equations, calculating derivatives, integrals, and so on. But you may have find different uses for it. If you want to like see what SymPy is used to, uh, then you can look at Google Scholar list of uh, citations of SymPy papers, or there is a Sotero group uh, collecting all scientific research articles uh, that where SymPy is being used. Uh, I think I have some of this open here. Uh, Yeah, so for example, here is some list. So you can get some inspiration of in which fields uh, SymPy is being used currently. Uh, but of course, you, you may find uh, new applications. 
and here just uh, for information a list of other uh, software projects which are using SymPy internally for uh, symbolic computing. I will not uh, like go through this list, uh, but uh, there are just for information. And uh, here is the current list of uh, SymPy features. Behind each of these points, there are uh, many pages, maybe in tens of pages, of documentation. Uh, currently, the documentation of SymPy contains about 2,000 pages. And uh, when I was uh, like choosing what, what to show at this talk, I had a hard time to select something that uh, uh, is uh, like a small subset that can be shown in, a, uh, in 30 minutes or so. Uh, so this was, this was a short introduction and the rest or the most of the talk will be uh, in the form of interactive uh, show in Jupyter Notebooks. And let's start with uh, some basics. I don't know how many of you have ever used some computer algebra system. Maybe that would be the only one question <laughs> that I will have to. Uh, please, uh, hands up, uh, people who have ever used some computer algebra system. Okay, so it looks like half of the people. So, you will, you will uh, already know what I'm talking about. Uh, so, as you, as I think everybody knows, the floating point uh, numbers in the computers have limited precision. So, when you do uh, some calculations like this, uh, you see that uh, the limited precision uh, affects the results. Uh, if you are using uh, double, double type, uh, you have some 53 bits of uh, accuracy, which means uh, you can calculate it, convert it. Uh, 53 binary. <laughs> 53 <laughs> uh, binary bits into decimal places and it's uh, about 15 to 16 decimal places uh, and uh, if you do repeatedly some operations then uh, in case that you uh, that you for example don't care about your algorithm too much it may be numerically unstable and once you repeat some operation several times, for example, in this piece of code, where the x should basically always be equal to 1, uh, but due to loss of precision and numerical instability, uh, just after uh, some 10 iterations, you have all, all the precision lost. And, uh, now I'll show you how uh, SymPy works in a symbolic way. So to start using SymPy, you can just import everything from SymPy, and the, in SymPy uh, the numbers are repre represented as objects, which can be either rational, integer, or float, with uh, capital F. And if I want to do the same, calculation like here. I write it like rational, which is 101 over 100 minus 1. And I get the exact result, because simply it's using symbolic computation, so everything is mathematically exact. Uh, you can input the expression in different ways. Uh, the problem is that you can uh, not give SymPy the. Uh, if you write in Python 101 over 100, Python automatically does the division and it will either return float or integer depending on Python version, but you always lose precision. If you want to uh, 
give this expression to SymPy. You can uh, provide it as a string, so SymPy itself can parse the string. Then it always also works with uh, exact result. Or there is this little trick. Uh, there is an end simplify function, which basically takes a float and converts it uh, to a rational number. So it reverse engineers the number. Uh, and it also give you, gives you the exact result. And if I rewrite the, the algorithm that I showed you before, or the cycle uh, in within the SymPy numbers, within rationals, you don't lose any precision. The results are always exact. Uh, so, a few more notes about using SymPy as a regular calculator with numbers. It has some predefined mathematical constant, like uh, base of natural logarithm, pi, imaginary unit. And when you type an expression, you, you may already see that in Python, when you type a mathematical expression, it gets evaluated. But SymPy reti retains the structure of this expression. And in addition to this, it defi defi defines many mathematical functions, and it knows, uh, let's say, most of the identities concerning these functions. So when it knows how to evaluate the function at, at a certain point, it will do it. So, and if you want to know the numerical value of any expression, uh, there is this function n, which evaluates the uh, function with uh, un arbitrary precision. Here I ask for 30 decimal places, and I get this expression with accuracy up to 30 decimal places. Uh, the, the library that does this evaluation is mpmath. It's the only dependency of SymPy, and it's very fast library for arbitrary precision arithmetic. I can easily ask for thousands decimal places of square root of two and get it. So it's possible. And now let's get to symbolic computing. The main idea of symbolic computing is, as the name suggests, that you are using some symbols or variables. Uh, in contrary to some other computer algebra systems where symbols are defined implicitly, where you just use it and it becomes defined, in, in SymPy you have to create the objects. For this, there is the function symbols, and you supply to it a list of names of the symbols and assign it to variables. It's a good habit to name the variables the same as the symbol names. You can do it differently, but then no one will be able to understand the code. And uh, here I have just a few examples. You can, for example, create such an expression and simply just stores it, doesn't do anything with it. Uh, it can do uh, LaTeX printing within uh, Jupyter Notebooks. You can enable it with init printing function, so then the expression gets printed in a nice uh, mathematical notation. And this is uh, uh, just a uh, note how to create, if you want to create many symbols, you can use such a notation to create an array of symbols. Uh, the basics of using SymPy is just manipulating the mathematical expressions that, that you supply to it. So, for example, you can create such an expression, uh, and then there are many functions to, to manipulate it. For example, you can expand the poly polynomial, you get something like this. Uh, this is easy, but you can also factorize this polynomial, which is uh, with a more difficult question, but SymPy can also do it. And then a very useful thing is that you can do substitution. So for example, you can 
use the method subs to substitute this sum x plus y with variable z and get this and uh, it can also like the manipulation with polynomials it can uh, collect for example when you have some polynomial like this it collects the terms with the same power of x if you ask for it so you, you get let's say the second order polynomial with in x uh, it can uh, work with rational functions uh, so if you provide some rational function to it it can uh, cancel the two polynomials find the uh, common divisors and divide with them it can also decompose uh, rational functions into partial fractions which is useful for example for integration of, uh, of rational functions uh, I will give you a few examples of what it can do with uh, trigonometric functions for example if you take uh, sinus you can expand again and now this, this expand function I, I used it before for expansion of polynomial but it can also expand trigonometric functions if you give this argument trick true and it will use the formulas for expanding trigonometric functions and then simplify also has a function for simplifying using trigonometric formulas and when you apply it to this expression you get again the input expression and it knows the basic formulas like, like this for example square of sine and cosine equals one and, and many more uh, now let's look at exponentiation uh, for example you can write a formula like this x to the power of alpha times y to alpha and you may think that uh, this can be simplified to x times y to the power of alpha and you ask if the power simplification can do it uh, but it doesn't simplify it and the reason is that actually this identity doesn't hold in general uh, it, uh, because simply assumes that every symbol by default is a complex number and for complex uh, basis and exponents it does, this doesn't hold for example uh, this expression equivalent uh, minus one the square root is i so i times i is minus one and this is plus one so it's a counter example and if you want to simplify this expression you have to define the symbols for example as posit uh, the basis as positive and the exponent as real then this expression holds and the simplification will be carried out uh, it, there is also the reverse function to expand the simplified result and here are just a few more examples that it can uh, understand the nested exponentiation and for example if you have a logarithm function like this then you can again ask Simpy to expand the logarithm and you it will apply the formulas for logarithm of uh, uh, multiplication or exponentiation and again it is able to combine the expression back to the original form uh, this uh, need for the assumptions that the symbols are positive or real that I showed here uh, sometimes you just want to avoid it, you want to do some quick calculation then uh, these functions accept a keyword force equals true and then you can force this for example expansion even if it's not mathematically correct for complex variables <laughs> maybe I shouldn't show this <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, simply is also 
able to rewrite functions, for example, uh, it can rewrite uh, uh, trigonometric functions in terms of other trigonometric functions. For example, you can ask for uh, tangents x in terms of sine x, so, or for example, factorial x in terms of gamma functions. Uh, so here I'm just touching a very broad topic of special functions. Simply includes many of them, very complicated special functions, but I'm not, not going to talk about them. Uh, it can also do combinatorics. You can rewrite binomial uh, coefficient using factorials or it can do simplification of binomials. So, so just really going through uh, quickly through many functions. Uh, so, so far it was just a manipulation of expressions. Uh, the next section may seem uh, more interesting and that's equation solving. Uh, that's something that we can encounter quite frequently. Uh, I have to make a remark here about equalities in, in Python and in uh, SymPy. Uh, since uh, SymPy is using Python as its language and it doesn't attempt to change the logic in any way, it means that equal sign means assignment and double equal sign uh, tests for exact identity of two expressions. So it means that if you print the expressions, they look exactly the same, then this double equal between the two expressions is true. But if you want to define an equation, you need to define an object EQ, like this. And you can solve it using the solve set function. And you get it attempts to get all the solution of the equations. So in this case, it's minus one or one. Yeah. It can also solve equations with uh, periodic functions, for example. So uh, here you can see that I didn't provide an equation, but just an expression. And then it solves the roots of the expression, which means the, it solves for uh, the expression equal to zero. Uh, the solve set also uh, uh, supports restricting the solutions to a certain domain. So you can, for example, ask for real, real solutions of certain equation, like here, and it will tell you that there are no solutions in the real domain. Uh, now, uh, thanks to the assumption that all variables are by default complex. It will give you uh, quite many solutions, even sometimes unexpected, like the exponential of x minus 1. Uh, obviously the solution is x equals 0, but also uh, all multiples of 2 i pi in the complex plane. Uh, it can also solve inequalities. Uh, although the capabilities are uh, quite limited so far. Uh, and there are also functions for solving uh, uh, systems of linear equations. It can also solve underdetermined systems of linear equations, like the one here, where I provide a list of expressions. I have two expressions, which are assumed equal to zero, and three variables, which means that it's underdetermined, uh, so the solution is not a unique set of numbers, but it's a line which is parameterized by this by this formula, and it can also solve systems of nonlinear equations, for example, like this. So there are these four possible doublets of solutions. Uh, now, before going further, I will tell you a little bit about the internals of SIMPE, how it actually works under the hood. Uh, so when you uh, multiply, for example, 
two symbols. Uh, each, each of these symbols, of course, has overloaded the multiplication operator, and when you do the multiplication, it returns multiplication objects with, which stores its arguments. So it basically, uh, there is a function as wrapper which uh, produces expression that can be evaluated uh, in SymPy to recreate the expression. And it basically stores the expression as a tree and we can uh, create such a function to print the tree. Uh, uh, I will not explain it in detail, uh, but this one is simple, but you can have some more complicated expression like, like this one and when you print the expression tree, it looks like this. And we can see uh, several things in here. For example, this piece of the expression uh, that it's over y is here. You can see that there is no division, but division is uh, encoded as a power of y to minus 1. Uh, similarly, there is no subtraction, but it's if you want to subtract x, you add x multiplied by minus 1. So this is just to reduce the number of the objects in the expression, of the various classes of objects in the expression tree. And uh, you can access the elements of this object when you ask for the func, you get uh, the topmost part of the tree, and when you ask for arcs, you get the, arc, uh, the branches of this, and then you can go deeper and ask for this function and these arguments and so on if you, if you need it. Uh, so, and now let's show something about calculus, uh, which uh, let's say for me is maybe the most interesting part of SymPy. Uh, in general, when you want to uh, start a SymPy session, you just import everything and call init session, uh, which creates some uh, uh, I will disable this quiet and you will see that it creates some variables that you can directly use and you don't have to define everything. And so in calculus it can calculate limits. The limit function takes expression, the limiting variable and the point where to evaluate. And so this, this function has a limit 1 at 0. Uh, then you calculate the limit of 1 over x at 0. You get infinity, which uh, may feel strange, because uh, 1 over x does not have limit at 0. Uh, but the reason is that uh, if you look at the arguments of limit, you see that there is default direction plus. So it, by default, calculates the, di the limit uh, from the positive side, and then the limit actually is infinity. You can cal calculate it from the negative side, and you get minus infinity. And if you want to ask for the bidirectional limit, the true limit, let's say you can write the direction plus minus, and it will explain to you that the limit does not exist. Uh, now, something that is uh, true for, let's say, many objects or functions in calculus, you can either ask for evaluating the limit with this function limit, or you can create an object called limit, which is not evaluated, and you can evaluate it later if you need it, or just use it as it is. 
and evaluate it. Uh, now to the differentiation. Uh, there is again a function diff. Uh, you give it an expression and the variable and it will calculate derivatives. You can do multiple derivatives like a second order derivative if you provide the variable two times or you can provide the variable and integer which says how many times you want to differentiate it with respect to it. So these two expressions are equivalent. You can differentiate it with respect to multiple variables like this. And again similarly to the limit you can also create a derivative object that is not evaluated like this. And then you can use it for example to define a differential equation. Uh, Simpy can also do uh, series expansion. Uh, so an expansion of uh, exponential function uh, looks like this. I mean, uh, everybody who had the calculus uh, course uh, uh, recognizes it. Uh, and of course you can calculate series of more complicated expressions. And uh, again, if you look at, at the arguments of this hunt, no, I don't tell you. Uh, you see that the arguments are the variable uh, in which you want to do the series, the point at which you want to expand the series, and the degree. And so, for example, here I will do the series at 1, and from the same expression uh, it gets uh, much more complicated because you lose the symmetry of evaluating this at zero. Uh, and I would like to make now, now a short side note. Uh, and this, if you want, for example, to get an idea how well this series uh, corresponds to the original expression, you may want to plot it. So I will show a few examples of plotting. Uh, so I will again define the series and SymPy includes the function plot with, to which you provide an expression and if you do it just like this it will do some adaptive sampling and pr plot the expression in some default range. Uh, you can, of course, customize it and you can plot multiple expressions in, in one plot. So this, for example, shows the comparison of the function in blue and the series approximation in red. Uh, for example, you can also uh, compare how increasing the degree of the series improves the agreement. Uh, but uh, I have to say that uh, for more complicated plots, are, I prefer to use matplotlib, which I'm used to work with. Uh, and it's really easy to uh, connect SymPy to matplotlib. Uh, you can use a lambdify function, which takes an expression and converts it uh, to a numpy function by default. And you get this in uh, in Matplotlib. Uh, you may notice, maybe for example, this small thing that SymPy also allows you to uh, uh, print uh, print the exp uh, expression in LaTeX. So then you can automatically create a nice nice labels in the legend in mathematically typed. And just to show you what lambdify does, it actually defines the function which looks the same like the original expression, but now this x and sin are uh, numpy functions. 
Uh, and now, just quickly, examples that you can also plot 3D surfaces or parametric surfaces. And I, for convenience, I'm using uh, inline plotting, but you can also use uh, the interactive matplotlib window where you can manipulate with the 3D plot like this. And okay. And so an important part of the calculus is solving of ordinary differential equations. And if you want to work with functions, you have to define the symbol to be of the function class. And you can define the equation like this and solve it with the desolve function, which takes the equation and the unknown function. And you get a solution with the uh, integration constants. And yeah, and I think I have to speed up, so I will now, uh, in order to show you actually some working with, with data, uh, I have a few slides of some application of SymPy uh, on working with data. Uh, so uh, let's generate some data. Uh, we have here two, let's say, time dependencies. One is decreasing in time, the other is increasing in time. And let's say that uh, we have some model of these data. We think that the data are described by some differential equation, and we want to find the parameters of this differential equation. Uh, and let's say that it's some equation, a set of equations of this form, because we have two variables. Uh, it corresponds, for example, in chemical kinetics to conversion of one species into another. So these orange ones are being converted into the blue ones at constant rate coefficient, which is encoded in such differential equations. And you can solve, again, this differential equation, but you can also apply initial conditions to these differential equations where you require that the initial value of f at 0 is n0. You just name the variable like this, ng0 to be n1. And you get a solution like this. And now, if you want to uh, find these parameters, you generally can do uh, nonlinear least squares fitting. Uh, so you can convert these functions into NumPy functions and use, for example, LMFit or any other uh, fitting library that, that you may want to use and create a function which calculates the residual, which is uh, basically the difference between the data and the model and call minimizer on the residual. It's very simply said. And you get these parameters, n0, n1, and alpha. And if we now look at how, we, how I defined it in the beginning, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 1, you see that within the errors, which are also estimated here, the parameters are in agreement. And uh, there is one remark which for which SymPy can be also useful uh, for finding this uh, optimal parameters one has to calculate the Jacobian of these these expressions which is the derivative of these expressions with respect to each of the parameter uh, and uh, in general the LM fit calculates it numerically, which means that it has to evaluate the expression many times at some close spacing to estimate the Jacobian. But since you have SymPy, you can calculate the derivatives symbolically with the Jacobian function, the Jacobian method on matrix. 
and you convert this matrix into some function which can be supplied to LM fit and again calculate the least squares and you get the same result as expected that shouldn't change but what has changed is this function evaluations now we have 12 function evaluations before we had 39 so almost four times reduce the necessary number of function evaluations uh, if you supply the Jacobian in symbolic form. Uh, so I think I should conclude now <laughs> and I will conclude with a few remarks towards yourself. Uh, the, my talk was, of course, not meant to teach you how to use SymPy, uh, but maybe to show you how, how easy it is to start using SymPy. So I recommend it to you to try it yourself. Uh, if you encounter any problem, of course, consult the documentation, but if you don't find a solution, don't hesitate to contact the co community via uh, mailing list or on Stack Overflow. The developers are there as well. Uh, if you find any issue, just report it. That's already helpful. Uh, and I have to say that the Simply Developer community is, I think, uh, very welcoming to, to new people. And it really tries to uh, make, make it easy to start contributing to Simply. There are very nice uh, uh, like development guys at, at this, this address. And uh, really, it's uh, quite uh, quite easy to get involved. If because if you know Python and some mathematics, then then you can get involved. Uh, and now I would like to say thank all the co-authors of SymPy, uh, whose work I was presenting here. And finally, I thank for your attention. <laughs> so, are there any questions? <laughs> yes? Maybe a naive question, but I'm wondering, uh, having this unlimited uh, precision, will it be useful in some way for to invert matrices? So, in a large uh, set of equations, you know, to, to simplify and streamline. Uh, mm. uh, yes, I think if you if you can uh, get the matrix coefficients in rational numbers, then then for sure.